Before we begin the video, there are a few things I wish to address. In the description, I'll be putting a timestamp for whenever it actually starts, so you can skip ahead if you don't wish to see this. These are just a few things I need to address. The first thing, probably the most important one, is I can make no promises towards historical accuracy within this video. All the information I have is going to come from memory and not, I'm not going to have a book sitting there with me. I'm going to to a page and quote out of it is going to be whatever is floating around in my mind. So it will unfortunately have been altered and tainted over time as that is what the mind does. So maybe I'll grab something from a work of fiction or I'll create something completely new without realizing it, but I can make no promises towards accuracy within this. This is just a weird kid making a video because he can pretty much. So you'll have to live with that. The second thing is the collection is in a state of disarray. I am currently hoping to remove the couch that you see right here, put in some bookshelves there, and the shelf that I have the camera sitting on. Uh, I've got a bunch of books on it. Move those over to that, then use this to put more on as my collection on as I am running out of space, particularly with my Soviet gear to my, uh, I'm pointing out, I don't know what side that is. To my right, I suppose. Yes but things are messy. I'm also moving masks off of heads and hoping to find one or two heads that aren't star from that aren't going to damage the masks over time so I can have a few of my things that are, are display not very well off of the head, have them be displayed as best as I can. And the final thing I want to address is not in regards to this at all, as in regards to my channel as a whole. Within my last video, particularly, the audio was incredibly quiet. I am not sure if that is an issue with the program I used to record, uh, OBS, or if it is a problem with the microphone, but I am going to try to figure out how to improve audio because I was speaking louder than I normally do, and the audio was incredibly quiet, I found. So I'm going to see what I can do to adjust that in future videos. I'm going to run some audio tests probably this weekend. So, hopefully whenever I upload a new video that's not something in this style, it will be better audio quality. Starting off in the bedroom, we have the very less important items that I have, though still worth mentioning. Just two swords, they're really nothing fancy. They got like a serial number on them, if I can find it. Yeah, you've got that right there. I think this is Pakistan, so these are clearly no historical significance to them, but they're kind of cool. I like the design and everything. Like probably whack someone over the head with them if they broke into the house, so they're not all that bad. Then in the closet, again, nothing incredibly fancy or anything, but there's some jackets I got from my grandfather. This one... I quite like it. It's a bit large. These are just some, I guess, shirts. I don't know. I have no idea what significance they have, but I do have them, so they're worth pointing out. Moving into the hallway, we have this poster for... It's the roster for the 116th Infantry Company K at Camp McLennan. That picture in the center is my great grandfather it, it, it's been taped to the photo it's not originally part of it i have i do not know what is underneath i'm not going to remove the picture as i don't want to damage either of them but design wise the poster is actually quite nice i'd say it has the names of every single man within the group it has i am assuming the leaders and everything it is just some vibrant colors even if they faded and it fits well in the hallway so I'm quite happy that I have this. Then this is some German barber's gear from World War One because my great grandfather he was in the Argonne, the Eastern Argonne Offensive and he was cornered in the trenches along the southern end by this nest of German snipers and he eliminated this mess, and, one of the, and as the soldiers did, looted them, and one of these guys was the barber for the group, so we ended up with these. It's the scissors, the clippers, brushes, and then a belt buckle, which is not barber's equipment, of course, but fits in with that very well. 
Then moving in here, the bulk of my collection will start on this side as it is easiest. We have just a lot of books in this bag down, this box down here. I keep most of my uh, bags that I have for masks. And then up here, I've just got some things I've made plus like a powder horn and a fun little helmet that I don't know of any significance with them, but they are nice to have. Here is what I refer to as Hazmat Harry. It is a training suit. I am unsure of the model, but it's too large for me, but it is a cool thing to have. And fortunately, I got it for free thanks to a family friend. In the closet, we have a couple of uniforms. They each are the jacket or I suppose it is a jacket, pants, and then somewhere we've got a hat that goes with them. We've got two of these. There's a trench coat back here that that is not showing up with the light at all. And then down here we have this hood thing. I'm unsure what these specifically are. And some other kind of jacket, I'm assuming. I, I'm afraid I don't know too much on these. They're from the... Uh, 50s. I believe the uniforms themselves are dress uniforms. Past that, I know nothing. They were given to us by a uh, family friend. Then some reproduction posters from World War One. All of them quite nice to have. This is my uh, newest acquisition. A I believe I believe it's a PDF seven Soviet children's mask. It is. It was ten dollars. It's nothing fancy. It's doesn't look to be all that well made, I'd say, but it is a nice addition to the collection as I do enjoy collecting Soviet items. Moving on over here, on the ground we have the OP-1 chemical suit, the bag that came with it somewhere here. I've got the bag for the suit itself. I've got some gloves with it. It is quite a nice addition. Up top, we have just some more modern posters. I've got this book on Chernobyl, the GP5, infamous. Practically everyone has one if they collect this stuff. I've got the, this little pin here, a Soviet sniper pin or badge, I believe it is. Basically, highest proficiency in whatever the Soviet Air Force is. I've forgotten the name of it. Ushanka with a... Uh, parade hat pin I believe it is that I have not got around to putting on yet back here we've got bag for aviation mask the KM32 here we have some Soviet goggles and this is the full Soviet aviation set I have someone told me the model of the helmet but I've long since forgotten it the OP1M or PO1M one of those goggles I've also got the tinted lenses for them and the KM32 mask. Somewhere up here, yes, here they are. I have, I made these to stick inside the eyepieces to turn green to be a character from the webcomic Romantic Apocalyptic. It, it can, it's a very easy thing to do if you want to do it to a mask. It's like, it's going to be $5 to buy the clear plastic dividers, then you cut them the right size. Preferably ones you can see through, of course. Here we have the industrial GP5, which looks a bit cooler, but is not as comfortable to wear, in my opinion. The, I've, I've not gone around to look up the model for this, but basically off-brand GP5. The GP4, the Polish MC1, I believe it is, and the GP5M, GP6, I've heard it is both, along with a little filter, a little, I believe it's the DK, DKP5 dosimeter, and some little papers and stuff that I've ended up with over time. We have we have the SR1 head wound mask, a Nandis Ferrian Clark uh, CDV75, I believe it is, CDV715, the finish m61 these are some liquidator metals i have heard that they may be reproductions or fakes at least with um 
these bits, the actual ribbons or whatever that they are on. I am unsure if that is the case, but they are cool things to have, so I don't care too much either way. Two check M10Ms, which are, I would say, terrible masks, but they are nice to have in a collection, I'd say. Some little, some more papers, instruction manuals, stuff like that. Moving on down here, we have the uh, 4A1, I believe it is, the Israeli civilian. The, oh dear, the Israeli M15, I believe it is. <laughs> Military mask, this paper on Soviet equipment and stuff, some NBC pouring stuff, pouring training card. Um, this is the Scott Pro Mask 40. At the time I received it, I heard that it was the one the FBI currently used. I am unsure if that is still the case, but it was at the time I received this mask. I do know that. And that is what I've heard at least. This, I'm actually unsure what this is. It looks like the Israeli civilian that fell on the ground, but it's not. I heard that it may be a German model, though I am unsure if that is the case. Whatever it is, I ended up getting it for free, so I'm not going to complain. Some decontamination packets there. Nothing fancy, of course. I don't even remember how much they cost. It wasn't much, but they are nice little things to have. I've got some German chemical resistant gloves at MRE and the... German M65 mask. Then down here I've got just some standard respirators. This being the fanciest of them and possibly the uh, most dangerous of them. It doesn't look all that safe to me. Got some belts and bags and stuff. Use the uh, goggles for or the box for the goggles I've got with my full set. Then moving over here, this is my more historically significant. Equipment. So this is actually my grandfather's jacket. He was a, a tank commander. I don't know specific model of his jacket, but it is a very nice one. I've got the bag for the M9A1 mask, which is nice. It has the Coca Cola logo on it, which I've always thought was a nice logo. Then up here, this thing probably an ashtray out of the bottom for larger shell than suppose 50 caliber bullet. You've got the bag for the American gas mask for World War One, the corrected English mask. That there is a newspaper on D-Day happening from June sixth, if I can find it. Yes, right there. You can see it. This is a M nineteen eleven hat, probably the cavalry one. I am unsure. Then the. Leather suits mask, probably butcher that pronunciation, or at least the accent. I've got the M M16 stall helm and a container for the mask. Opening it up, you can see owned by a W. Krauss, whoever he was. I do hope he made it through the war. Going down, we've got my great-grandfather's helmet along with the, the mask that the bag goes with. This was owned by a Lester Joseph Lefray, who... Uh, I believe he got it as a coal miner after the war, though he was in the military at one point. But he did not serve during World War I. This is the victory medal that we have from my great-grandfather. Unfortunately, it's the only medal we have of his, as the rest got sold. I know there was a Purple Heart that he had, but there was one other that I'm unsure. I believe it was awarded to him because of the issue with the sniper's nest. But this is actually his journal. I'd open it up, but I don't want to damage the stuff inside too much. We've got his spyglass along with the case for it. We've got the commemorative uh, Colt 45 automatic. This little toy soldier who unfortunately has been injured and has lost both of his arms. We've got his dog tags here. Uh, aluminum, I believe they're made of. Circular uh, compared to our more rectangular dog tags uh, these days. Incredibly light. Uh, the... Drill regulations book, a little hymn book, which is quite nice. This back here is a, another photograph of him. It's actually, let's see if I can get better lining for it. It's actually the same photograph as is on the poster, just in a fancy case this time. Yeah, that's 
much better lining that is uh great grandfather as i said save the grenade from falling this is probably world war ii grenade i'm assuming world war ii based on the rust and everything i don't know a specific model but it is a nice thing to have this we're actually unsure what it is we say dust bowl respirator but we don't know for certain as i've not been able to find any information on it but for now calling it a dust bowl respirator will suffice moving down we've got a uh, m1 helmet the uh, m1 a1 non-combatant gas mask the these are my some of my great uncle's stuff his purple heart his I don't know if like good conduct as a soldier or something. I looked it up and I've forgotten now. Some of the things is a uh, driver mechanic badge. Uh, whatever these things are called, whatever they signify. I've long since forgotten the name of them and never learned what they signified. Uh, no records there, which are nice. This is a uh, sewing kit that I have. Uh, it seems to be complete, though I'm not 100% certain. But I picked it up for $15. It's not what I normally get, but I thought it would be a nice addition to my collection. Then we've got the bayonet for the M1 Garand. This was my great uncle's as well. It is a pretty cool addition. I would actually like a um, Garand to be able to display this on if that is legal, of course. But as of right now, I'm perfectly happy with just having that individual protective cover. Also heard it called a gas cape. I'm hoping to purchase another one of those sometime soon. So I can have one fully in the case and then one out on display. But for now, just the one will do this. Actually, take this one out. This is some just a mix of stuff. The helmet itself is a reproduction. I do know that bought it for $20, so it's not like I lost a ton of money on it. The goggles, assumed Cold War, I know they're Soviet, and then the mask is apparently World War II Soviet mask that was, I suppose, for a low altitude flight or whatever, just to protect against cold, but it's in remarkably good condition because apparently the factory it was in got surrounded by the Germans into the war, so they never got shipped out. I don't know how true that is, but that is the story I heard with this so I will take it as the truth unless proven otherwise. This is the uh, GM30 mask. It has been modified. Someone stuck a lawnmower muffler on I don't know why, but it happened and I guess sort of amusing, so I'm not going to bother changing it. Then I've got a uh, Finnish M55 stall hill, I believe it is, on it. This is a container apparently found in a field in, or in a barn in France near Normandy, I, I, I believe it was. Um, I don't know how true that is, but it is a nice addition again. Then this, I've got it with the, like the hood on it. I'm not sure how he's going to get this out, but this is a uh, M42, I believe it is. American mask from the very late Cold War up to more or less modern times. Actually, you've got some more grenades. This one that he's likely to blow up as this thing. I don't think that's going to do anything. Got some, just some of my uh, grandfather's stuff again. First aid kit, the M17 gas mask, M17 one with another M1 helmet that was my grandfather's. I've got M9A1 here. This is uh, the hat I was referring to. I've got some military money here, some little camo face paint. Then down here is just some other stuff, some medals, canteen, goggles, stuff like that. But this here is a photograph of the group my grandfather's with. As I mentioned, he was a tank commander, and he is this man right here in the center. He was the uh, leader of it, so placed in a position of importance in the photograph, I suppose. But it's a very nice photograph. If anyone knows what model tank that is from... Just that I would appreciate knowing as I have no idea at all. But moving on to the last item here, the most interesting thing in my collection. This is a bayonet 
it's incredibly long, doesn't look like it would be a bayonet, but it is. I'm actually I'm going to have to set my phone down for just a second to open this. But, if I can get it, yes, perhaps. No, it doesn't want to open. I'm going to try to get this. It was opening just the other day. I didn't want to put it back in the thing, but that was outside of my control. Ah, here we go. We'll just set it on the ground for easy filming. This is apparently a M1866 bayonet for the, uh, I believe it's the Chespo needle fire rifle. I may have horribly pronounced that, but this is a sword bayonet, French, from the late 1800s. It is the oldest item I own, though not necessarily the most valuable. It is surprisingly light. The case, I would actually argue, is heavier than the bayonet, or at least less balanced. Yeah, I would say that it is heavier. It is just... It looks really cool, and I would not want to be f facing someone charging me with this affixed to the end of their rifle. So, it's, in a sense, terrifying as well. But, the last few things I need to mention, if I can find it. I've got it sitting somewhere up here, I believe. Or maybe it's on one of my chairs or something. Uh, I am not seeing it at all, but somewhere in my room I have this little coin thing. I believe it's Operation Enduring Freedom that has mysteriously vanished somehow. But, uh, no, here it is, inside the duct tape. This thing, I really have no idea what this signifies or anything, but we've got it. It was given to us by a family friend, so when I'm going to take it, I'm not going to turn anything away. I will think this was even given, I think this was given to us before I started collecting, but it's certainly an interesting item. I just, I don't have anywhere to display it, so it just sits on my desk most of the time, but certainly is one of the, uh, I'd say more interesting items in my collection to me, just because I know nothing about it, or the conflict it was involved in, so that, uh, concludes my collection tour, and I hope whenever I film another one of these, I will do a better job with talking about all of this.